All right. I want to welcome everybody for joining us on the internet. I know that probably nobody's on it yet, but they'll be coming on it. And so I'll just be nice and say hello, everybody. But I need you tonight, <coughs> if you got your Bibles, to turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Can I get one of you guys give me a bottle of water? I forgot. Thanks. Ephesians chapter 6. And we were talking about putting on the whole armor of God. When you're dealing with spiritual warfare, this is a really important particular teaching. So last time I, what did I teach on last time, guys? Let's see if anybody was listening. Protecting your spiritual life. Yeah, I, I thought about, I think it was, was it uh, like the... Keeping your heart. No, no, that was that was Sunday morning. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was good though. Oh, I it was the loin skirt about truth. Was that? That was the thirteen. Let's see, rulers of darkness. Yeah, no, wait a second. Oh, I am missing notes from the twenty. No, it's it. Yeah, it was the one on the sexual things. Okay, let's start at verse ten. Ready? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all uh, perseverance and supplication for all saints. Okay? Tonight we're going to talk about a very important subject, the breastplate of righteousness. Now, I'm going to go on my notes here because I, I just wrote a book, and uh, Seven Steps of Freedom from Fear, Anxiety, and Worry, and they were editing it, and uh, I, didn't, I, I, don't, I don't remember re, uh, writing it, but when I read it, I really liked it, and it has, a, it has a chapter on righteousness, so I'm just going to take the notes off of that. So, let's go over to Romans chapter 3. We'll start there. Um, a lot of people are mixed up about righteousness. And I remember when I first came into the, into the kingdom, um, you know, it's, it was really easy for me to beat myself up because I had so much baggage, you know. And the, and the devil, he's, one of the greatest tricks of the devil is to try to get you focused on your past and trying to get you focused on, you know, uh, how evil you were, what you did, and what you didn't do, so on. And when when you say, if you ask the average person out there, even the average churchgoer, explain to me what it means to be righteous, they'll look at you and say, well, it means to live right, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But that's not even what he's talking about. Right. Righteousness is a position or a gift that God gives us at the new birth. Put a note, take a note. Righteousness means right standing with God. Yes, right. That's really what it means. Yeah. So in Romans chapter 3, verse 21, it says this. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith, of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. So here we see a very important aspect of this, that righteousness is given to us by faith in Jesus Christ. So it's a gift. It comes with the gift. And it's not something that you can earn. It's not something that you, righteousness is not, you know, good works. Mm -hmm. right. It's a standing. It's a position. It's a, it's literally what he does. As interesting as it seems, 
Jesus was righteous in every way, including living right, but God imputes that to us. So somebody asks you, how righteous are you? Don't whip out the Old Testament scripture and go, there's none righteous, no, not one. Because that's true, but we're not in that anymore. When we, when we become a Christian, we're given righteousness. Nothing that we do to get it, but he does it for us. So how right, righteous are we? As righteous as Jesus is. It's his righteousness. Amen. So then in Romans chapter 3, verse 24, it says this, being justified, what's the word justified mean? Just as if I'd never sinned. Okay, so when the devil comes to you and goes, oh, you did something, say, just as if I'd never sinned. Amen. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now, who can explain redemption to me? What does the word redemption mean? Bought back, right? Amen. It's like a slave in the old days, you know, uh, uh, somebody would be there. You, you've all seen a movie maybe where a girl was going to be sold into slavery and all these nasty guys are looking at her, you know, and they're going to, they're going to bid on her. And then you got the handsome hero who comes out, bids them all and takes her away and they all live happily ever after. Isn't that wonderful? Uh -huh. But anyway, um, that's what it means. It means that you have no way to pay for, for anything, but Jesus did it for you. He paid the price. He redeemed us. He paid the price for whatever it is that we need including redemption. So being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth as a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, His righteousness that He might be just, just and the justifier of Him that believes in Jesus. You see, it's about your faith and what Jesus did is not about what you do. And so many Christians are trying to please God by their acts. They figure if they pray long enough, God will accept them. They pray that if they, if they just do what's right somehow and they live right enough, God will accept them. And, they, and, uh, and most Christians live like that. And they beat themselves up because there is no possible way that your good works are ever going to please a holy God who is perfect and always has been. But... He doesn't see you like, uh, like you see yourself. What He sees you is in Christ, yeah. in His righteousness. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now, when you begin, see, I needed that. That, that message really, really changed my life to understand that, that it wasn't about me. It was about what He did for me. Made me him made me want to serve Him more. Yeah. Made me want to live better, Amen. right? Yeah. So this is, uh, this, and then Romans chapter 4 if you go down there, let's look at another verse of Scripture. Verse uh, 3. For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for what? For righteousness. It wasn't about his works. It was he believed. What do we have to do to be righteous? Believe. Now to him that worketh is, is re the re reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Even as David also describes the blessedness of the man unto whom the God imputeth righteousness without work, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities forgive, are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Wow, that's awesome. So we all fall in that uh, covenant. God will not impute unto us sin. Now, when we sin and we do sin, we have, aren't you glad that we, have, we can confess our sins and He'll cleanse us from all our righteousness? You know who that's for, don't you? That's for us. God doesn't really need us need that to, to you know he he needs you to, to to confess be honest and then know that it's been cleansed out and that's important just being honest with God about it so you have this relationship with God you want to live right but always remember this no matter how good you live the only thing that's going to get you 
praise God, in contact with God is what he's done. His righteousness. And he says freely, I, you know, you have received freely given. He says, come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. That's a, what's amazing about God is no matter how much, how many have ever messed up bad since you've become a Christian? Okay, I, I think you probably all could say you have. But it's amazing to me. It's like when you come to him and you confess, it's like it never happened because as far as he's concerned, it never did. He just blots it out. Amen. Now that does not give us <laughs> a license to go sinning and you know doing whatever we want to do like some people are teaching today. Because when you sin, like if you continue to do that, it's going to get you, you know, we reap what we sow. The whole point though is that, that uh, uh, we're not under the law, we're under grace. And so when we confess our sins, he cleanses us so well that's, there is no past. This is what's interesting. People, people can't get this, but here we go. The second one really comes to the Lord Jesus and gives him their life. His blood does such a work in cleansing on the inside of, side of us, it's as if we never had a past. And the devil can go, do you remember what you did? And you might remember it, but you can say it's all underneath the blood. It's none of your business. I always tell the devil, my sinning or my sin is none of his business. It's between me and God. I don't need to listen to his tootin' horn. You know, just, just tell him. I said, how about you, you dummy? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, but see, in Romans chapter 4, verse 20, uh, Speaking of Abraham, a father of faith, verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was going to perform. Amen. This is, this is, this is what righteousness does. Right standing with God will put you in a position when you, know, when you understand it and you understand how it works, you'll be in a position to, to have faith in God that is dynamic. In other words, you know, because the devil can't get to you in your thought life. He can't, he can't, he can't make you think. You know, the Bible says in um, Romans chapter 8, there's no con now no conduct. In fact, let's go over there and look at that. I like that scripture. Romans chapter 8. So, you know, if you really get strong in this, the devil knows uh, he can't mess with you along these lines. That's how you know you're strong. When you're not being concerned about it, you know. Even if you make a mistake, you get it dealt with. Verse 1, there is no, therefore now, everybody say right now. What does now mean? Hmm? Does now have a beginning? Does now have an end? Is No, it's just right now. That's really interesting the way he terms that. Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Yeah. So, and then, they, and then you say, well, you know, sometimes maybe I don't walk after the Spirit. Well, j jump down here and uh, let's see here what I, which scripture I'm looking for. I know it's right here. Well, anyway, the Bible says that we are not in the flesh. I can't, for, for, for some reason, I'm not, is it nine? But uh, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be the Spirit of God dwells in you. So, you, you see, if, if you've been born again, and filled with the Holy Spirit, but even born again, just, then the Spirit of God dwells in you. And if the Spirit of God dwells in you, you are not in the flesh. 
So the devil can't, you know, don't let him pick on you. Oh, yeah, that didn't work for me if I wasn't in the flesh all the time. But you're not in the flesh, you're in the spirit if the spirit of God dwells in you. Sorry, I couldn't find that, but thank you, Melissa. Anyway, so we are justified by his grace. We are justified by our faith. And, and Abraham, the father of our, of our faith, was justified that way. And it was not the law. The law was a schoolmaster to teach us that we couldn't keep the law. And the Jews found out over and over that when they tried to keep the law, as much as they tried, they just couldn't do it. And it, it always got messed up. And the whole history of the Old Testament is one mess up after another. And this goes to prove you that you cannot do it yourself. Well, you have to rely on what he has already done. Yeah. Now, that's important. Amen. And so when you begin to understand that, it takes away all this trying to strive to please all the time. I don't. And, you know, a lot of people were raised in homes where their father, as an example, or their mother, what is it like, you know, bombarding them over the head about being a perfect, perfection, getting the best grades. You know, you got to get the best grades. You got to do this. You got to play football. You got to do this. And you're always trying to please them. And so when people come to Christ, they're like that with God. How can I please him? How can I please him? Well, the Bible says uh, without faith, it's impossible to please him. He just wants you to have faith. That pleases him. Because yeah. you're putting your faith in what he did. Yeah. And you just have to remind the devil that. So this is very important. And uh, so Abraham, he believed God, and it was counted for him, uh, to him for righteousness. Amen. Now, to, not to him that worketh uh, is, is a reward, not reckon of grace, but of debt. I like that. But to him that worketh not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God. And being the father of faith, that, that's in there to show us that we, we can be the same way. We do not need to stagger at the promises of God. We need to rest in the promises of God. Now, Romans chapter 4, verse 23, you know, one of the things that's wrong with this Bible is it's been hacked up about the same amount as, as uh, my wife Stella's, and it's hard to spot anything, let alone a scripture in half of this. I, must, I don't know why, but my other one was so big, to try to put that thing in a bag, so large. yeah, it's like, you know, you're carrying, or if you carry it in, into, a, into the... Um, you know, like the, the airport or something, people think you might have a bomb in there or something, you know. <laughs> Go through your bag and they're looking at, oh, it's a Bible for God's sakes, you know. That's a big Bible. All right, so in, in Romans chapter 4, verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. We stagger at God's promises because of unbelief. Unbelief of what? Well, right here he's talking about, you know, that we're the righteousness of God. So, then in uh, verse uh, 23 of Romans chapter 4. See, did I, sorry, did I go over that yet? No. Now, it was not written for him, his sake alone that it was imputed unto him, but for us also. To whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So here again, he points out to us that that's what G why Jesus came. It was all for us. He was the only person that could have ever done that. He was the only one that ever pleased God in his, his entire life. And so he now imputes that to us wow. on an equal basis. So when God looks at Stephanie, he doesn't see a dirty, rotten, wormy sinner. He sees the righteousness of God. He sees a joint heir of Jesus Christ. He sees a king. Well, she's a queen, really, but we're all, there's no male or female in the Lord. I guess, I guess God was the first unpolitically, or the first politically crap person. Uh, she was a, a king, a priest, a son of God, a child of God. A joy and air with Jesus, all these terms, new, uh, new creation. But my, one of my favorites is the righteousness of God. Because when I think about that, I go, wow, that's just so, he gave us. You know, I mean, you know, we all know how messed up we are. 
but he counts us as righteous. Right. Amen. Amen. Woo, that's shouting ground, man. Now, if you look down uh, Romans chapter 5, and we look down here at, say, verse 12 or so. This is fun. It goes on and it says some things here. Wherefore, as by one man's sin entered into the world. Who is that? Adam. When Adam sinned, sin entered into the world, it touched everybody because it got in the bloodstream. Right? And blood's very important to God. Have you noticed that? <laughs> And so there's a lot to that, but wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. See, Adam in his blood, there was no sin. Blood's an interesting thing, because blood is, if in, in you, if you lose your blood, what happens? Why, though? The zoe of God, the life-giving force, resides in your blood. Man's blood. So, what happens to a person if they lose their blood? They die, right? But, what happens if somebody takes blood out of another person, puts it in the refrigerator, and then transfuses it with somebody else that can save their life because that blood has life. Without the blood, the the body will begin to malfunction. And something wrong with the blood, the body will begin to deteriorate. But you see, it wasn't that way. Adam didn't have any, he was like Jesus. But when sin came, sin was so powerful, it got into the blood. And then when Adam and Eve had a baby, he went to them, and then the next one to the next one. So everybody in the world has the same problem. We all got tainted blood and sin in the blood and sin in our spirits. And so we all got this problem, this issue, and it had to be dealt with. And so God's remedy was to send Jesus and shed his what? Perfect blood. Perfect blood. (laughs) Woo! Perfect blood. God's blood. Because, you know, it came from it came from his uh, his father in the in the virgin birth, <clears throat> or he could not have redeemed us. So Jesus didn't have any sin in his blood. So when he poured out that blood, that God's blood or that sinless blood was for us. Praise God! <laughs> like, wow. Isn't that something? I love it. So so wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for all have sinned for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there's no law nevertheless death reigned from Adam to Moses didn't it even over all them that had sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression who is the figure of him that was to come Adam was a figure of Jesus who was to come as a man but not as the offense, so also is a free gift. But if, the, if, if uh, through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. So when we were in Adam, right, we were all dead. But when we come to Jesus, we're all made alive. And not as it, it was by that one who sinned, so it is a gift of, for the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift, everybody say free gift, free gift. is of many offenses under justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift, everybody say the gift, the gift. of what? Right. Of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Amplified, classic, the gift of, uh, uh, one man, the gift of righteousness, the, you show, the, we shall reign as kings in life. Yeah. Reign as kings in life. Now look at most Christians. They're not a reigning. No. <laughs> They're barely struggling along, trying to pay their bills, make out this and that. You know, they, they have no, most of them have no righteous consciousness. So the devil's able to 
you know, somehow trick them into thinking they just don't measure up. And you see it all the way through the Bible. Remember when, they, when God sent out the 12 spies? These are leaders, 12 leaders. He says, you go out and spy out the land now, he says. Numbers chapter, I think, what is it, 28 or whatever it is. And so they go out to spy out the land, and they come back and they say, oh, man, this is like the Lord said. And God had told them, I'm giving you this land. This is your land. That's what he said. This is yours. All you got to do is possess it. <laughs> so they go out there, and, and they said, oh, my God. It's just like God said. They're great. They're so, the, the grapes are so huge, we had to put them in pools. We got, you know, the pomegranates are so big. It's a land that flows with milk and honey. But there's giants. There's Anax and Tanax and other Anax and all kind of stuff there, you know. And 10 of them came back and they started spewing out this evil report. How are we going to take the land? And Caleb and Joshua that were thinking differently, they were trusting in God. They knew that God was bigger than that. They had a relationship with God, understood it. They said, shut up. We're well, we are well able to take the land, right. you dingbats. But what you just said made, gave, gave God heartburn. And they ended up literally wa- waltzing through a desert experience for 40 years. And Caleb and Joshua, not even Moses, but Ka- poor Moses, but Caleb and Joshua were the only ones who got to go into the promised land when God said, it's yours, they could have had it within a few weeks. They thought they were worms. They're no good. They don't measure up. Like they're going to go beat a giant up. I'm not stupid enough to, sh- to, to punch a Sasquatch. If I saw a Sasquatch, I need something bigger, like a bazooka or a rifle. I know enough not, or at least give me a slingshot with God's anointing on it, something. You know, but they should have understood that God's not going to tell them to go do something. You know, you can can go take a land when you can't take a land. I don't care how big it was, how nasty they are, what what it looks like, you know, how bad it is and, you know, all that. It has nothing to do with it. And and they get their eyes on that. And this is God's people. They get their eyes on the sin. They get their eyes on on all the stuff that they're trying to do that they can't do. They get their eyes on this, all this worldly stuff that's going on. They get their eyes on that. And they don't put their eyes on God and who we are in Christ. And pastors get up and we share, share this stuff and people go, hey, that's really good. And they walk away and they walk out the door and here comes the devil and he just pounds them a few times and the next thing you know, they're back in the same old rut. And I'm here to tell you, it's about the same. Out of every 10 Christian, or 12 Christians, you'll get 10 of them that are unbelievers and maybe two that aren't. Now, I, I, wanna, I think we ought to raise up in our church a whole bunch of those second ones, right? Hallelujah, because it's up to us. It's the way we think. The scriptures are very clear about these things. So Adam brought death. Just all it took was that one mistake and death passed upon all men. That's powerful. But if sin is so powerful, it touched everything, including the throne room. Because sin didn't originate in Adam. It originated in Lucifer. And when he sinned and fell, he left a taint even up in the throne room because he used to be there, you know. And Jesus had to come up and present his blood and, and, and sprinkle it. What's more powerful than sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That righteousness that is imputed unto us. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, go to Isaiah chapter 54. So if people are going to walk free from sin and anxiety, you, you, you have to know this. You can't walk around. You can, you'll never be free from fear. How, how many want to be free from, from fear? You know? I mean, today people are afraid of their own shadows. I was, I, I was under the impression, this is my personal opinion, but I think 
probably 90 to almost 100% of all the people in America, I would say maybe 90%, maybe, I don't know if it's that high, but close, I bet, have had COVID already. Now, they're finally admitting today they think 60%. But I think everybody, because, you know, a lot of people, I had COVID. I didn't report it. Right. Most everybody in here that got it, you didn't report it. So when people don't report it, how do they know how many had it? But I believe that people have had that thing, and I believe that that's why it's going, you know, we're not even hearing about it because it's not, it's not really having an impact anymore, so they've got to come up with something else. You know, they, They're probably working on it right now in the lab somewhere. But if you're going to walk around here and be fearful of that, I mean, look at the way the church is shut down. Church is shut down because pastors were afraid, uh, you know, and, and the government told them. And I said, I'm not going to do that. We're not going to shut down our church for like three or four or five months. So a lot of these churches up here shut down. I don't know, some of them may be still shut down, wearing masks. You know what that is? That's just fear. Yep. Yep. It's being afraid. I mean, why don't we just get afraid this flu season? And some of the stuff that I'm seeing in the flu thing, it's a lot worse than the coronavirus was because some of the people get really sick with that flu. Yeah. And we get it every year. And we've had it for years and years and years and years that it's been going on. And yet we don't panic every year the flu season comes. At least most people don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you see, they, they, that fear, that spirit of fear came in. Well, as the church, I watched the response. I'm not talking about you guys. I'm talking about the overall church. I watched the response to that, and I was appalled. I could not believe how completely out there we were when it came to our faith. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. It was just like... What has been preached for 30 years? It's like nothing was ever preached yeah. about faith. Right. You know, and yeah. Psalms 91, and yeah. by his stripes we're healed, and you, come on. Yeah. Amen. The blood of Jesus, and whole families, you know, they wouldn't even get together on Thanksgiving or whatever unless you had the vaccination or you had 17 masks on, or, yeah. or, and, and the split families and everything else. Wow. I'm sitting there going, what a bunch of nonsense. Never split my family. We had a great Thanksgiving. I, I ate extra gravy on everything. They're telling me at my age you shouldn't do that. I did it anyway. I said, God's going to keep me around here until he needs me there or whatever. You know, whatever that is. And I can go ahead and eat some gravy if I want to. The Bible says, eat the fat. There's a scripture that says... Eat the fat. Now we're finding out that a lot of these diets, it's good to eat the fat. Good fat. Good fat. Oh, man, come on, pork. But anyway, it's amazing to me what the people think. Are you there in Isaiah chapter 54? Yeah. Be nice if I was. Let's look down at verse 13. I hope you don't feel like I was ranting. But I was a little bit. Good. I just, I just yeah. didn't get that. I still don't get that. And people are arguing. Here, here's another thing. You know, Mario Murillo is being mightily used of God. Probably the number one guy in America right now. Okay, and I know him. God raised him up years ago, but the guy is, he's something else, man. He's a good one. And he went into New York and he preached to a bunch of people in New York. A bunch of them got saved, and there were so many miracles they could hardly count them. So he was going to go back, set up the tent again. He goes back, and they sit and said, nope, we don't want you here. Well, why? Well, the pastors don't want you here. Why? Because you like Trump. I thought, that's an issue? I thought evangelists were there to preach the gospel, no matter what your political beliefs are. If your people are getting saved, what do you, what's the problem? Well, we don't like Trump. I'm going, who, are, who in the world are these pastors? Are they pastors? I think, I, think the, I think what we're seeing is a separation of the goats and the sheep and the wolves and the, yeah. everything else. Yeah. I really do. Because if you can't discern the right about that, yeah. I wouldn't want to go to your church. Yeah. And I'm vocal about it, and I know some people might be they don't like that, but you know what, I'm not going to change. Right's right and wrong's wrong. Now they're coming out with all this election stuff. It's worse than they thought. Oh, yeah. Right's right, wrong's wrong, the election was stolen, and so on. Amen. Yep. 
And, you know, even, the, even on some of these uh, 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 news things, they're starting to come out with it going, you have, they're going to have to because it's so much in the face that's right there. What is that deal with the... Uh, yeah, but what is, what is his name? Desh- De- Dines D'Souza. He's got that movie coming out. Ooh, that's going to rock some boats. Every time he's, he does something, it rocks boats. But um, they got the proof. It's just that some people... Uh, don't want to listen. Now, what has been happening on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter for the last maybe five years? Censorship of people like us who believe a certain way or have a certain viewpoint. Used to be in America, people had viewpoints and we could debate and be kind to one another, right? But they censored us. They, 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 they took off the president of the United States of, of all ungodly, wild, stupid things. I, I couldn't believe that. How can you take a president of the United States off <coughs> today as I was sitting there listening to these guys because, you know, uh, what's his name? Bought the, Elon Musk bought Twitter, probably by Facebook too. Watch. Richest man in the world. And he says, now we're going to change this around. You know, people are going to be able to say what they want as long as it's not like something, you know, really that you can. But uh, anyway, these, all these liberal commentaries came out and said, but you, but you see that, but you see that what that's going to do is it's going to give, give somebody an opportunity to just Say they want this president, or they and, and take away from this one, or they're going to, you know, they're not going to be able to. They're going to be able to, you know, cut off all the ads that relate to what they they want. They're saying the same thing they've been doing for two and a half years is going to happen. I I couldn't believe it. I said, do they really believe that? Is that really the way their minds are working? Yeah, it is. We need the blood of Jesus Christ. We need a washing and a cleansing of our minds in the body of Christ. Come on, everybody. And I'm just going to throw this out there. We even need deliverance. I think the service we had was fantastic. And a lot of people got helped by that service. You know. And I've got them call me on the phone. I mean, it's really great to know that people can be helped. Hallelujah. So I'm willing to do more of those, you know. Isaiah 54, verse 13 as long as we have somebody who can clean up, I ain't doing that. You guys are going to help me with cleanup, right? We did. I know. I just went home. <laughs> I went home, took a shower, and ate. Okay, verse 13. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the, p- the peace of thy children. In what? In righteousness shalt thou be established. You see, we have to be established in this thing called righteousness. It's very important to God. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Now, let's let's look at this carefully. If we are established in righteousness, we will be far from what? Oppression. You see that? So if oppression is still happening, we still not maybe totally established in righteousness. I'll, I'll never forget when I first read this. I think I can't remember the book, but it was so good. I thought, my God, that's so good because it all goes together. In righteousness thou shalt be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear. Fear brings oppression. Righteousness and the establishing of righteousness delivers from fear and from oppression. Amen? Amen. And from terror... For it shall not come nigh thee. Yeah. Amen. Whew, man. Then if you, if you drop down to verse 17, it says, No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you will condemn. Why? This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Now, what's that all about? You're standing there, and the devil's condemning you, and you say, No, no, no. You can't condemn me. My heritage is righteousness. God sees me as righteous. I I don't come on my own terms. I come through that righteousness. And there's absolutely nothing that Satan can do or say 
to try to get you yes. out of God's great grace Hallelujah. that way. Hallelujah. Amen. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Yeah. You know, Jesus said in Acts chapter 10, 13, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost who went around doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. I mean sickness and disease and oppression and fear and demons and yuck and yuckety yuckety yuck and all that stuff. We can be far from that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. From terror, from from being afraid of everything. Some Christians are afraid. I tell you what, Christians right now, a lot of them are afraid of their own shadow. I saw some guy on the, on the plane today. I got the biggest kick out of this because he was rejoicing and he was so happy. You know why? Because he didn't have to wear a mask. I mean, so we're happy. We don't have to wear a mask. We're, we're, you know, how, how, I mean, why should we even had to wear a mask? How do we get to this place to where masks are going to save everybody? You know? So a sheet, of, a sheet of cloth is going to save you. Now we're finding out in 2020 that more people died of weird stuff than any other uh, a year in history. Wow. And it wasn't COVID. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe, it had, maybe some of it was vaccines. I don't know. Probably. They could be jabbing you all kind of wild stuff. Yeah. But if you've had a vaccine, don't worry about it. Just claim the blood of Jesus. Purge it, pur purge it out of your system. Yeah. That's, see, that's, what I, that's how I handle stuff like that. Somebody says, well, you know what? <clears throat> I had a girl today tell me, the doctor told me I might have diabetes. I said, no, Jake, I don't have no diabetes. Because, no. you know, you're pregnant or whatever, and you have that diabetic thing that goes on in some, everybody has, a lot of people have that. Yeah. Well, you're, you, you, and the doctor, here's doctors for you. Well, you know, you got a real risk now of having type 2 diabetes. I would have said, I got a real risk of not having it. I just not going to the doctors no more except for checkups. I just not going. I'm not going. I don't want them digging around in me. I don't want them going up my colon. I don't want them going down. I don't want to. <coughs> hey, I'm 66. If I, you know, I, I figure I figure this way. If I get a, past a certain age, me and dying's my business. I'm serious. Everybody's afraid of dying. Why are you afraid of dying? I always tell people, why are you afraid of dying? You're a Christian. Why would you be afraid of going to heaven? Yeah. <laughs> I've been over there a couple times, and you should not be afraid of that. Yeah. It's not like you're going, oh, it's a horrible thing to die. Right, right. Wow. No, it's a wonderful thing. It's part of, and now you don't want to die too early, but it's, 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 the, it's a part of life where we finally get the fullness of all the promises. You know, we finally get to experience everything. You know, you can go up to heaven and, and uh, they have river, they have a river of life that comes down off the mountain by my property up there. And it's like something you've never seen before in your life. The water is crystal clear, but it is coming down that hill fast. Yeah. And the kids go all the way up, or people go all the way up to the top of that and jump in it. Some of them just dive in it. Some of them have little rafts. And they come down that sucker full blast. If you've ever seen like a gigantic waterfall, they go down that, hit the river, go under the water and everything pop up. And, you know, they can breathe underwater. Nothing hits them. If they hit a rock or, or whatever they are, I don't even know if they're rocks. They just bounce off. They no bruises. They don't drown. I mean, now that's a cool picnic. Yeah. Amen. I mean, they got, they got all kind of stuff. And heaven is so big it's, big, it's as big as our universe, yeah. that planet. You know, our, our, per, our, our universe, you know. Wow. <laughs> our galaxy, anyway. I, well, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. But, uh, you know, it's huge. It's, it's so much bigger than our. You can have as much land as you want. You know, you can have land on the beach. You can have land on the the. the the, the mountains, you can have land on the rivers, you can have land, like in the north woods, you can have land, and you can have it all at one house. Yeah. 
One side of your house goes out to that, the other side goes to the beach, the other side goes, I mean, I'm serious, you know, we'll sit here, get all concerned and worried about that. I'm going to die. My loved ones died. We all rejoice if they're Christians. They're, they're experiencing that right now. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. So righteousness brings about a deliverance in our lives. Who we are in Christ. I would encourage all of you guys to spend time meditating on what the Bible says. Start in Romans and go through and find the scriptures that say who we are in Christ. You know, what he's done for us what he can do through us, and just make a journal of it and start confessing him. That's how I started. And you do that long enough, and the next thing you know, you're not believing the lies of the enemy anymore. You take the enemy and you just giddy up and go. You send him on his way, you know. And he, he knows it too. When he sees somebody who knows that, he knows. You know, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? That's not going to happen to you. Because he knows who you are. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, how many got something out of that? That's a good, encouraging word tonight, right? And uh, this is a good book, by the way. It's going to be really good. Seven Steps to Freedom from Fear, Anxiety. I'm going to give that to Lydia. It's her birthday. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a great copy, but it's readable. You want to get it? You can give it to Lydia. Happy birthday, Lydia. <laughs> Pastor Joel's working on a cover for that, and uh, uh, you know, and then we, we're doing another one called Psalms 91, How to Claim Psalms 91, Amen. which is necessary now, too, since everybody's so afraid of these viruses or whatever. And by the way, you know, um, I don't think personally that, I think personally uh, the government even or the military knows a lot about behind the scenes what's going on with these things. And I think even some of this war stuff may not be what we think it is. Yeah. You know, uh, somebody says, are you a conspiracy theorist? Well, you know what, now, yeah. <laughs> because all those conspiracies have come to pass. Right. You know, so I, if there's a conspiracy about something, I have a feeling some, there may be a, a strain of truth through that, you know, but we're, we're not seeing. It's going to be fun, isn't it, this isn't it? When are we gonna, what's going to happen here pretty soon? Anything? I mean, they got it all lined up. They've got the vote, the election deal, um, the midterms. That ought to be interesting. The midterms are going to be a total swamp. Yeah. It's going to be both. We had what, how many? Uh, how many? Stephanie, forty Democrats and rhinos quit already. Just retiring. See, so the pressure is on them. So we keep the pressure on them until they all leave, right? And then we put in people that really want to run our country good. And here's the thing about that. You know, Mario Murillo had that thing. 3,000 people got saved at the Maybe Center. 3,000 people in America. That's a big altar call. I got altar calls of 100, 150 in America, and I thought I was, I was hot stuff. But, man, I mean, 3,000, that's amazing. In America now, Pakistan, that's okay. I can, it's easy, but but here, but here, but uh, uh, he's getting that. And most, you know, who a lot of those people are? They're patriots. They're they're people that are coming to those meetings. Not not they're not Christians, but they're patriots. And then they're hearing the gospel and they're joining us. Hallelujah! I mean, the devil can't win, can he? He's just getting them. He's getting it on all sides, everywhere. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to, if you need uh, an offering or, or you got an offering, go ahead and uh, get it and they'll serve you. And uh, how many of you guys got uh, electric bills? You got electric bills? You know what mine was this month? $301. I said, well, thank you, Lord Jesus, and thank you, Joe Biden. <laughs> Three hundred dollars for a heating bill. I guess it's because we have all kinds of refrigerators plugged in all over the place for all the meat we have and everything. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, yeah. And we have all the heaters on and everything. I don't like using fuel oil, but what's the difference? I mean, it doesn't cost about the same. The fuel, the fuel oil went up like uh, 58% or some kind of thing like that. Yeah, it's just like, wow. 